Good morning and welcome to another session of Daily Jesus. Today we begin uh, reading a new book and we're going to read 2 John and 3 John together. Firstly, in 2 John, the problems that had prompted John's first letter have still not been resolved. So now John writes the second letter with stronger words. Here, John is showing us his unwillingness to give up on the people. Amidst all this, John tells us to not even greet the people who keep spreading false teachings and reject and keep rejecting Christ's incarnation. He is telling us that we cannot be confused in separating our love and, and uncompromising on truth. Continuing on, we come to John 3, or John's third letter. At the time, it was commonplace for a minister of the gospel to not remain in the same place for a long time, but continue to move on around and expand the church by continually planting more churches. And the local churches that have already been planted would help in this process by aiding these people, these evangelists and ministers, um, and financially as well. However, over time, it's evident that the financial help to these people would go on to slowly decrease. And John writes this third letter in order that he may encourage the churches to continue in their aiding of the advancement of the Gospels by financially supporting the evangelists and ministers. Keeping this in mind, let's all open our Bibles to read um, John's second letter and third letter. Second John. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us, from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teachings has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face, so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greets you. Amen. Third John The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church. But Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers, and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone, and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends, 
each by name. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, I'll give you some application questions that will help you meditate on what we've just read today. Firstly, true love is not compromising truth at the expense of love. In what situations are you conflicted between love and truth? Secondly, as the church, we must place a focus on helping our ministers financially so that they may be able to focus on the spreading and the teaching of the gospel. How are you able to help your church ministers today? And thirdly, how is Christ through the patches today, leading you to a moment of conviction and repentance? Keeping all of this in mind as we meditate, and let's all conclude today's session with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that through today's readings, you've shown us what true love is. You've shown us that at times love demands that we are unwavering in truth that we uphold God's gospel values, that we are not compromising on truth um, and, and coating it and calling it love. Father, we understand that this is also how you love us, that you proclaim truth into our lives for you love us. So Father, convict us and enable us to be able to live a life that's upholding gospel truths, that's not compromising on truth uh, as we call it and make excuses under love. Father, allow us through the scriptures to be convicted to, um, to live as the salt and light in our daily lives and our daily ministries so that we may be able to pass on the truth and pass on love to one another as we expand your kingdom. Father, we also pray that um, you are able to grant us uh, material and finances um, uh, um, so that we may be able to help our fellow ministers in the church. Allow us and open our hearts to be able to give generously with a joyful heart so that we may be able to um, attend a church and build up a church in love that is focusing on the spreading and truthful teaching of Scripture. And allow us to be able to um, help and be a church that also helps other ministers um, who are all around the world um, so that they may also be able to focus solely on the, um, on the truthful and honest and humble preaching and teaching of the word. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope and pray that through today's reading, you've been convicted to um, uphold gospel truth in love and have your hearts opened to helping ministers all around the world spread the gospel. Embrace Jesus, embrace people.